Yo, what's up, guys? This video, I think I went like 20 wins in a row or something on ranked with my Manadium deck. And I want to show to you guys exactly how to play this deck inside and out. This is just the best deck this format, and it destroys all the meta decks. It's built with cards like Droplets that after Rysar got banned, it's just insanely powerful. I just OTK'd versus six interruptions. Actually, seven interruptions because there's protection as well. I'll show you guys the replay as well at the end of this video. Stay tuned to the end. This is going to blow your mind. This is what deck could play 16 go second cards that are like game-breaking cards while still being a heavy, heavy, heavy combo deck. Just play this and watch the replay. You're going to see six negates. A Delta, my, my amazing editor that I love, just show, show like the board that we're dealing with. And there's three sets to show it. So Let's we have to see. deal with Citadel, Protection, a draw, Imperm, called by Regulus, and uh, Citadel anytime, the pop of Derek Crane. So seven interruptions. Dude, this six negates, it's actually seven interruptions as we kept going. All three traps are real. Like no deck could break that. And I opened zero board breakers. It was just a normal hand, but it's because of Fenrir. Oh, the reason behind this deck is that Vices and Manadium is so powerful and they're one and two card combos. I'm going to go straight into it. I'm going to say the name as well for noobs. When this shit comes to Master Duel, with all these cards, I'm playing it. Three Vices, three Roomheart, three uh, Meek, one Torrid. Don't play more than four balls, bro. You already got enough balls as it, as it is. Your pen players playing Manadium. So the reason why you play one Torrid and not more than, more than one ball is when the only time you ever want torrid is when you know you're gonna pop meek three times when you know you're gonna pop meek three times just instead of searching meek first search torrid first summon the torrid pop it and then pop meek two more times there's no sh reason to play two torrid it, it's not good to open up two balls it's not good to have too many like it's great to have balls but not like manadium balls so that's all you need just one and you get access to it anytime you want three scare call right card the best bait bro summon right card if they don't stop it they're they're screwed if they do stop it they're screwed there's no answer we're inevitable three calarium two right phobia guys please be playing two light heart two right phobia for the love of electromite bro you need to play two of each of these this is how you win the game you summon your first light heart oh i negate this i feel so safe that's what they're gonna think and you still get a thousand ways to it whether it's fenrir searching scarecrow cash donner getting rid of your, your extra monster zone and then resummoning it or whether it's armatara getting the other one you're always like going for two of these every single time and if they don't stop the first one you just save the second rank phobia's follow-up perlerino that's right why do we play perlerino play terraforming you play thrust post side in 99 of matchups so now you have four terraformings you want a card that searches vices it's not rank phobia or calarium because calarium wants to search your manadiums and you don't want to outright like just terraforming search right phobia when right phobia is going to be gotten to you for free so you'd rather get right phobia for free anyways one rota because all these cards scare cash because of the fenrir two arrival now i've been going back and forth with one arrival one twin saw but twin saw is there because when you get drilled or shifted you still end on serious interruptions plus all these floodgates you side in so when you get drilled you have floodgates plus you always start with right card search twin saw or there's scenarios where if you draw a ball, where you draw one of your balls and like Vices or Roomheart, you could you could literally go into Armatara as your first search. Get the counter trap, draw, sure. Set goes in, set counter trap, go. You just destroy them next turn. So this is how you counter draw. And two arrivals cool because you could go right cart search one, Armatara search one. And that's how you get the crazy combos. You're gonna see in the comment tutorial. One obsession, please. Don't play three. That's the stupidest shit I heard in my life. Don't play three of this shit. Bro, you get to search this card through your whole deck. You get the Ruhar anytime you want, ever. The only thing is gonna search is Calarium. You're always gonna have Calarium, and you always have a single way to get it. And you have 28 card, 29 cards. You have 29 cards. The first 29 cards you see are all combo broken cards to open. Even a rival's great because you're always gonna end up resolving it, and they don't know you have it. So when they feel they're safe, you rival something and go into Lightheart. You only play the one obsession to search it and you side into reframing. Don't main the traps. Make it as broken going second as possible. You have 29 one card starters. That's fuck. That's crazy. Next, uh, yeah, the one right soft because you want something to search with terraforming. You don't need too many because there's uh, a right starts ban. Uh, this was the hard counter to, to Kashtira before, but this is plenty and this is amazing. A lot of decks this format can't even deal with one Fenrir. Salaman grades in, in, in shambles when they see one Fenrir on board. Now, as for my 11 defensive cards, I'm going to explain the reasoning behind them. With the Rysar ban, Droplets is absolutely nuts. 
because you could save it when you need to and because of all the quick play effects you have droplets it, like resolves for three and like it doesn't even affect you whatsoever like you activate a field spell then you just activate book of eclipse you have some monsters on board are chained droplets negate four cards and you're still able to save it as a defensive card and it's just the overall bro like it's just the best card to have here and you don't lose the shit like branded or whatever and it just stops everything eclipse is broken but here's the theory of the deck you're playing 16 go second cards right you don't want to have like three of everything because then you're gonna open two of each of them now i know the thought oh yeah if it's so broken i want to see two of it the difference of eclipse econ and talents and imperm are not that crazy talents is probably the best out of them but again you don't open two talents and it's not like absurd so it's very good to have like a range of cards a mixture of cards and if you have multiple droplets like droplets is the only one that's so powerful i want to see three and shout out to my chat who's hyping me up yo thank you guys appreciate it. you guys are the best uh follow on twitch if you want to see more and subscribe on youtube if you want to see more this is the, the idea behind it you have 16 go second cards now post side deck you might be looking at my my side look how many I, I side in eight cards going first i side in eight cards going first eight eight bro and out of these 11 i just keep whatever three i think is best in that matchup or a lot of the times if i know for a fact they play some hand traps and you're gonna get drilled you're gonna get shifted you're gonna nibbed whatever you the three cards you put in you remove all these 11 and you play three thrust whether d barrier or uh karma cannon destroys the deck it sets one of them and you play to like you don't need more go second cards you already have 16 main deck and you side into seven more so against heavy combo you literally have 23 board breakers 23 and it doesn't alter your deck because you play 17 one card starters it's bananas especially because these five act like these five as well as thrust and talents going second they act as combo pieces so now when you're going second despite the fact you have 23 go second cards five 10 of those go second cards are combo as well so you really only have 13 cards going second that are like that are like good defensive cards right you go first you already know this deck obliterates you unless you get drilled through infinity hand traps which is why we put in all the floodgates so you let them droll you you just play smart and on a weaker board knowing you have these floodgates get make sure your first search is either twin saw or amritara because amritara will get to counter trap plus the floodgate you have and then when you get drilled on thrust thrust will just set the d barrier or karmic cannon in conjunction with your amritara and counter trap and you kill them next turn that's the idea behind the deck and it, it's amazing only stuff that are subject to change in the future oh one more thing the reason why you play one evenly and one lightning storm so there's scenarios where you thrust is just that broken there's scenarios where you want to go thrust search evenly especially when they negate something right away like all these cards need to be negated you book of eclipse let's say they, they have baron and like five negates but they're monster negates or shit like that or they have like traps or whatever they negate your eclipse obviously thrust evenly enter battle you're cooked that's the beauty of having one evenly with this and the, also we play one duster one lightning storm because now you don't play three like spell trap destructions we'll actually play six and in a lot of decks talents is drawing two as well so you're getting these it's like eight ways to it absolutely busted and obviously you need to play one of this for pearly and the way to out pearly is simple i don't play any link five that no problem beating that deck first off they don't always end in the link five sorry on the, on the noir five and most of the time when they see you're about to go plus a thousand they just detach from the five get rid of something and that's when you chain your droplets or you chain your econ or shit like that that's when you do it so droplets is just absurd and you just have the one herald abyss just be careful that in case they have a set if they have a set and they're really good they might summon a purely monster so the herald abyss sends that one instead so make sure they have no sets when you resolve herald of the abyss that's for the extra deck two of these mandatory cross sheet mandatory apollos and mandatory okay donner is the 15th card but the reasoning behind it is still required it's required because okay for one it's just a good go second card but mainly it's because you're playing too light heart there's so many scenarios where they negate the first one and you just have monsters on board to do nothing so you just go Donner, pop the other interruption, and you just go into your other Scareclaw Lightheart, whether it be from Fenrir, or if you want to put Fenrir in the grave to trigger a Scareclaw Cash. There's so many different ways to do it. So having the one Donner in here as a card that just frees your extra monster zone is actually massive in this deck. Unicorn and Axis Code are mandatory. I didn't play it for a long time. You're gonna see that's why otk that's why i get a lot of my otks that's another reason why donner is nice there as well where you could dark it was the other option dark or donner dark is the next card to put in here but i feel like that you don't go into that go into it as much because you love your extra monster zone to be free that's why this is there blaster loud i'm convinced two is all you need in this i'm gonna show you guys a secret deck for those that are still watching this video this is a secret deck that i'm working on 
this is where my deck started we we're playing a hero lives and prisma by doing this you essentially send vices you go hero lives prisma you copy astrolabe and it's cost so the imprint it doesn't matter you still send vices starfrost to the graveyard because cost this now makes your scareclaw arrival much power more powerful this now makes triple astrolabe very viable because right after that you go into these cards and uh, prisma makes chaos angel way better so this is my other version of the deck but i find the kashira version is way better because it's too many go second cards it's just nuts you're not losing when you have 23 cards that are insane when the format shapes up you could remove imperm econ like eclipse talents who knows when the format shapes up what if it's a three deck format or a two deck format in that regard you you switch up whatever these 11 are according to the format as of right now how it is we don't exactly know what it is it's nice to have bits of everything and they're all very powerful uh next at one avatar i don't play any synchro six you don't need a synchro six it's like to do what to draw and pass it doesn't do jack shit you do not need the synchro six at all the only time where you'll want it is when you have two manadium balls and one room heart again we only play one torrid and three meek and like a room heart or whatever so whenever that happens you could just take two balls and a room heart and make amatara with it you lose the draw one but like the scenario where you have two manadium and room heart and your serious only plays a synchro six that's not a good play like that's not a good like setup like that's not where you want to be so you don't need a synchro six don't play stardust you'll barely ever make it you need to play croc because of uh, if you have fenrir and a ball it ensures that you're able to combo through scareclaw cash one baron one dispatter one crimson dragon don't play calamities it's just a waste of extra deck and the end board of this ends on always baron the spatter apollosa for three and then a combination of fenrir so you have baron the spatter apollosa for three uh and then a combination of one of these 14 defensive cards both side it's reframing and twin saw search that you always search these so that's six interruptions that are like serious twin saw is the ftk versus a lot of decks just from the link effect alone even play this against unchained against unchained what you do is you pop twin saw with baron to floor and then you have apoloza when apoloza gets a little bit of value and before they like find a way to get rid of it use twin saw and grave they're cooked they can't use any links they lose automatically that's the deck and to call like my option for go first cards are called by is just a great go first card mainly because of droll and again like if they draw you you're just fine you have these but there's no other card that generically is one card stops droll but at the same time it's like good on its own as well put these in always because you literally always search them and you put these five simply for the fact that you thrust into these two you decide some deep barrier is not great like the decks that deep barrier is not great against uh karma cannon is like absurd and that is the the deck uh, absolutely amazing let's go into the replay now of course too powerful for this as well no shit all right so this is game one i really want to show you guys game two I, I end up i lose game one and then i win game two so i lose game one uh i don't even know how i think i got absurdly sacked i think it was droll or some shit i forgot uh, i win game two through double hand trap well this will be good for you guys because i want to mainly for you guys to see game three i got double hand trap here yeah i got double hand trap and yet look he had ash imperm talent starter two starters like what better hand could you have ash imperm talents and two starters this guy can see the combo lines here the imperms that it doesn't matter just, like this is why you play so many copies of all these cards so now like you just auto win i'm just gonna sh quickly see this i mainly want you guys to see game three that's why this was here for game three was a spectacle it's like seven interruptions no board breakers and we win uh and we had like a lot of board breakers in the deck we just didn't draw them uh, i do a cool play here i actually don't even resolve right card i do a cool play where i knew i could have draw for free and i sense he didn't have nibiru because he would have used it already at the opportune time so i didn't use i just specialed right card and didn't use the effect i used the spatter to special the the right card to trigger to search twin saw and get a draw uh right phobia it, you don't want to draw this because you get it for free i just didn't have a good scenario where i could optimally get it next i go into baron this is through ash imperm and he has talents what could he possibly do he has three starters talents imperm ash i end on five interruptions because uh, well, four four interruptions four real ones and twin is gonna be a pop too like he can't do anything dude this was through ash imperm talents bro three starters no deck could do this through ash imperm talents three starters except for this and pen and my hand wasn't even that crazy it was just whatever no floodgate nothing yeah destroy that in the hand and then i still have twin saw pop too all right now i want you to see game three this is the main reason why we're here look at this he has he's gonna have three more traps he's gonna draw and look at what i have no board breaker the only board, board breaker is fenrir that's the only bet and now you're gonna see the power of fenrir right here so i'm gonna let him play his his turn is whatever he's playing machina but he has the full combo here where overdrive is amazing in this deck because overdrive essentially is like ensures citadel resolves when you want it and not when i want it Does that makes sense that's when citadel becomes absurdly broken when like he could choose the exact time to summon it out so i'm gonna let him uh, do his place he's gonna end up drawing a lot as well he's gonna draw into called by the grave as well he's gonna end on uh, uh some pops as well 
of the board you're gonna this is like a huge bro insane follow-up as well but just insane you're gonna see this this is one of my favorite duels uh yet so here's what you can do he's gonna set this up put up this link it's great that he has the link because this is gonna give him protection of his card he's gonna draw two the draw two will get him called by the grave and ruin force look at this he gets junk forward as well uh, that one as well all right so we have to deal with citadel protection a draw imperm called by reg and called by it's not pendulum it hurts us a lot regulus and sit, uh, citadel anytime oh and the the pop of derek rain so seven interruptions and i can't destroy anything by battle because he'll summon this out and he could protect one card so i'd even consider dread not protecting dread not protecting actually saved his regulus so he could have even had a, an extra interruption here that would be seven interruptions seven and a half and goliath gives this protection eventually look at this this is insane bro insane all right so i go terraforming into right soft always start with this the right soft i want him to interrupt look at my hand i want him to interrupt it it did like no actual like i'm not using like, dark ruler or something you know Fenrir into Fenrir. i'm trying to get him to interrupt anything the second he interrupts anything i could play more but he, he played very well he played very well he knows that he could pop my whole board so i'm playing very safe i i can't summon because the right soft gains attack to the card so i use uh clary i do not search vices star frost because i know that the way I win this game is by getting vices at the very end. I know this. So I'm saving it. I go lightheart, he gets imperm. This is a great imperm. My exact reasoning why you need two lightheart. He imperms my lightheart as he should. That's the, the part that you need to negate. And then I go room hard to pop this. I, I'm literally hoping he negates. I need him to negate. I have Scareclaw Arrival follow-up. I, I, I don't play Donner. If I had Donner, this is the match where I put Donner in because I recognize Donner made this so much easier. I also have to be careful that he had targeting protection. So if I target destroy one card, uh, it doesn't do anything. It, it doesn't actually like, he just protects it. So I have to be careful. He's playing very careful, not using monster effects as well. And that's when he uses the overdrive. An amazing scenario where he's going to end up popping my entire board. Four monsters destroyed. In this scenario, he uses uh, this to, to summon. Yeah, so he's going to summon that out and he's going to trigger the monster. And the new chain I could trigger because... Uh, the card got destroyed. You could summon this out. I use Fenrir targeting Regulus. Regulus is the problem I have now. Then he protects it with uh, number 81. This is very good on his end. And on, at the same time, not just protects it, but triggers the pop. So Calarium, I saved Calarium before as well. I saved it, but it won't be able to summon Meek now because he popped it. Then they'll pop my whole board. I the fucked up five cards in it. That's how good this deck is. Uh, Resolution, I use my last Meek. So I use them. I use it all. And uh, so then he wants one to read Arrival there. I still don't need to summon Fenrir. I'm still waiting. I need this card on board here. Next, I go Arrival. Called by the Grave. This was a massive Called by the Grave. Massive. So what do I do next? He still has a Regulus. Okay. So that was Regulus. I have Obsidian. I have Torrid. I have this. I go into Lightheart. I go into Regphobia. Keep in mind, I have Obsidian as well. So Obsidian uh, could get the card I want later and uh, summons. He knows I have Obsidian. I searched it. So I go Vices. He negates the Vices. This is great. I also can't Regphobia pop Regulus because it's effect it's unaffected. You guys see that? So he could have literally had another interruption. I could have Regphobia it. But I can't Regphobia Regulus because it's, protect it's protected. So I just pop that monster. So it's forcing him to use it ASAP. Then I go Obsidian to pop this. You get Calarium. Can't use Calarium right now. I just get it. Use Obsidian to Special Vices. And then what do I do? Special Lightheart from Grave. I literally use two Lightheart. Insane. Special Torrid because I have Vices on the field. Look at this. Cross Sheep. Astro Loud. Through seven interruptions. Summon. Make Baron. This is where Unicorn comes in. Unicorn. Send. Access code. Later. Insane. Insane. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was super, super in-depth. Uh, I really believe Monadium is the best meta call this format. And it got a massive buff. A uh, rise heart's gone, which is like this. This build destroys a rise heart as well. Kashtir was around, you'll still destroy it. This is just insane. This has to be the meta call right now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Just sure smash the subscribe button, smash the like button. Check out Twitch. Check out tripgaming.com for the best mats. See you guys next video. Peace.